In this video, I'm gonna talk about why NFTs could be the biggest technological revolution to happen on the internet since the creation of the internet itself. My name's Jordan Freed. I'm the founder and CEO of NFT.com. And unlike most people on the internet, I have nothing to sell you. My mission is to make information about NFTs and cryptocurrency, what they are, and how to make more money from it available to as many people as possible all around the world. So let's get into it. What are NFTs and what are the biggest use cases. Well, first, to understand what NFTs are, we have to go back through the history of the internet itself. Web 1 was the internet of read-only. There was nothing you could do with web pages outside of just consuming the content that were on those pages. Web 2 introduced us to the concept of reading what was on the internet, but also writing to it. This was the creation of social networks, MySpace, and Facebook, and Twitter, places where you could upload and create user-generated content. What Web 3 has introduced us to is this concept of reading, of writing, and owning your experience online. NFTs are a big piece of this. And in fact, NFTs can best be understood as a digital property protection right on the blockchain itself. So let's dive into eight exciting use cases for NFTs themselves. So let's get into the first use case for NFTs. Video games stand to be disrupted the most. In the video game world, players have for a long time been looking to monetize on the in-game experience. They've created really valuable user accounts and have gained possession of, or seemingly possession of, really valuable things like in-game currencies and rare items. For a long time, black markets have formed around some of the top games. World of Warcraft, I used to play RuneScape, you can see the RuneScape, um, my name in RuneScape font above my head here. And people have been selling these currencies outside of the context of these games. Look for a lot of the value of these assets to be tokenized in the form of NFTs and for players to be able to take them to game marketplaces, but also sell them for cryptocurrencies outside of the context of that game. I expect much more of the game experience, including ownership of land and rare items to be tokenized in the form of NFTs. Use case number two, bye-bye paper documents, birth certificates, passports, title deeds to properties, and authenticity certificates of exclusive luxury items like Rolexes or Chanel bags are all going to be turned into NFTs. Why? Ease of transferability and proof of authenticity. To be able to validate that this is in fact a real title deed, to be able to close on a property and get the title deed without waiting 60 to 90 days, this is game changing. It'll create much more liquidity and it'll enable real estate transactions and secondary markets around watches and around luxury items to occur without fraud, without the fear of a black market. That's gonna be incredibly disruptive. Number three, ticketing. Ticketing to events. NFTs are a much more efficient way to issue tickets. We've seen the Taylor Swift fiasco where the secondary market for tickets has gone through the roof. What's happening in the market here is that the issuers of tickets themselves, be it the artist issuing tickets to the concerts or the sports teams issuing tickets to come watch their franchises live are being cut out of the secondary market sales. We have middlemen like the ticket masters of the world that stand to gain the most when ticket prices get inflated. This is all going to change. NFTs enable a programmatic royalty to be applied to NFTs where creators can benefit on all of those secondary market transactions. And creators and sports franchises will look to adopt this. Use case number four, streaming services. When Netflix and HBO Max and Amazon Prime and Hulu are buying content or producing content for their libraries, oftentimes the creator of these hit TV shows are completely cut out of all of the secondary market performance around that content. The creator of Squid Games made a fraction of what Netflix, the platform, made on the popularity of that particular show. This just isn't fair and creators aren't going to stand for this for much longer. NFTs enable you to buy a piece of art, to buy a show, to buy a song, but in this particular case, to buy a show or a movie directly from a production company or directly from a director without having to go through a middleman like a Prime or a Netflix streaming platform. Look for directors and production companies to adopt a direct-to-consumer approach. We're already starting to see this from some of the top comedians where Louis C.K. has made millions of dollars 
dollars selling his stand-up co uh, comedic shows directly to his audience. Look for this to happen in the form of NFTs. Let's talk about creator tokens. Number five, creators issuing NFTs to token gate access to them. If you have a favorite influencer, you may want to understand more about what that person's routine is, how they got to where they are, who they are as a person. And paying for that access is something that many people already do online today in the form of Patreon subscriptions or OnlyFans or much more. NFTs are a great way for creators to be able to gate access to them, to their brand. Look for chat communities and online message forms to pop up where the price of admission is owning that creator NFT. This is already starting to take place and will happen at an increasing pace. Also on the blockchain, you can prove that you've been with that influencer from the very beginning because everything that happens on the blockchain is immutable. We can see when you got that creator NFT and just how long you've been supporting your favorite influencer. Number six, membership cards. Membership cards are going to be massively disruptive. Today we pay subscription fees, but private memberships to gated content communities are going to be huge. Much like the previous example of influencers creating these communities, look for online content sites to do very much the same thing. Instead of paying a monthly subscription to read the New York Times, you may buy a lump sum payment uh, or put a lump sum payment towards an NFT that gets you access to a specific column or specific newsletter or just specific content that you care to consume. Many more online communities are going to tokenize. We've already started to see this and look for NFTs to be that, again, price of admission for how you access those online content communities. Number seven, physical assets. Tokenizing physical items in the physical verse and bringing them to this digital metaverse in the form of tokens is going to be one of the most lucrative, disruptive use cases of the next decade. I'm talking about everything from authenticity certificates of luxury goods, title deeds to properties, car deeds, and so much more. Tokenizing these things are going to bring liquidity to traditionally illiquid assets. That's enabling you to close on homes at a much faster clip, selling membership interest in limited liability companies, being able to prove ownership of a rare watch or a rare car, and being able to sell that with much more ease. All of this is gonna be made possible through NFTs and look for all of that value to be brought on chain. Number eight, identity. This is one of the more disruptive use cases of NFTs, being able to use an NFT to log on to your favorite website. We already are starting to see the issuance of name service-like identities on chain. You could be jordanfree.eth or you could be yourname.eth. And we're already starting to see that issued. What is coming though is a token, an NFT that we hold that we use to log into websites. At nft.com, we are doing that in the form of nft.com profiles that are issued to you that we use for you to to log on. Look for many more web pages to adopt this in, as an alternative to things like Facebook Connect, Google Connect, and LinkedIn Connect. This is going to put the user back in control in the major social media companies, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. They won't be tracking everything we do across all the web pages and applications we use because we'll no longer be using their logon credentials to do everything that we do online. Thank you for watching this video if you've made it this far. If you've enjoyed this, please like this video and subscribe for more content like this. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment below. I try my best to interact with each and every one of you. Thanks again.